April 2, 1979. Another chilly spring day in Sverdlovsk, a city tucked away on the eastern slopes of the Ural Mountains, deep in the territory of the Soviet Union. A north wind blows, bringing cold temperatures with it. It's common for spring winds in the Ural Mountains to bring rain and snow. However, instead of gloomy clouds, a somewhat different cloud is hovering in the air, carrying no precipitation. It is an invisible spore fog of Bacillus anthracis, a dangerous bacteria that causes one of the deadliest diseases there is, anthrax. Anthrax spores usually don't hover around the streets, naturally occurring in soil. They could be found in agricultural regions, but hardly in urban areas. So how come an entire cloud of anthrax bacteria appeared in the streets of Sverdlovsk? The answer lies within the city itself, because Sverdlovsk wasn't an ordinary city. Back in 1979, present-day Yekaterinburg was called Sverdlovsk. With 1.2 million residents, it was the largest city in the administrative and industrial center of the Sverdlovsk district. Sverdlovsk had a special status within the Soviet Union, as no foreigners were allowed to enter it. Furthermore, some parts of the city were restricted, even for Soviet citizens without a special permit. Such secrecy was because 87% of the city's industry was related to the military. Sverdlovsk factories produced a whole arsenal of weapons, from small arms to ballistic missiles. During the Cold War era, the Soviets kept their weapons production program top secret. Westerners were not even allowed to glance at weapons factories, let alone enter them. That was why Sverdlovsk was a partially closed town. There were too many important and secret compounds inside for anyone to access. One such compound was the Microbiology and Virology Institute within the military base known as the Compound 19. The institute, positioned in the center of the 200 hectares large base, was protected by armed checkpoints and barbed wire. Formed in 1947, it was one of two main facilities for producing biological weapons in the Soviet Union. Scientists working in underground facilities were engaged in producing various toxins and bacteria suitable for biological weapons, including the anthrax spores. Apart from the fact that it was a weapons-producing compound, there was another reason why the Soviets kept the nature of Compound 19 secret. In 1972, the Soviet Union signed the Biological and Toxin Weapons Convention that prohibited the production and storage of offensive biological weapons. Obviously, in 1979, the Soviets were violating the convention. This fact was to be kept secret from the rest of the world. The general public, including USSR citizens, were unaware of the existence of the compound, but the CIA was not. The American intelligence agency had reasonable suspicions that a biological weapons production facility was on site because of the unique exhaust system vents on the ground shown by satellite imagery. It was in these vents where the whole story began. The vents on the ground were part of the exhaust system connected to the drying and milling equipment. It had special filters attached inside to prevent the exit of pathogens from the laboratory into the open air. Every Friday after work had stopped, the maintenance crew would inspect the facility and replace the filter with a new one. On Friday, March 30, 1979, the team removed the filter, but forgot to replace it. This was a deadly mistake. The weekend had passed, and on Monday, April 2, 1979, the production restarted. Without the filter in place, anthrax pathogens were free to exit, and 10 kilograms were released from the production facility before the staff realized the filter was gone. The cloud of deadly spores escaped compound 19 and carried by the wind settled along the 50-kilometer perimeter south of the facility. Regions affected were the adjacent military compound 32, a ceramic pipe plant, the nearby residential area, and a couple of villages south of the city outskirts. Apart from being lethal, the cloud of anthrax spores was completely invisible, so no one knew the accident had happened. No one was aware that death hovered in the air. Already, on the evening of April 2nd, 
emergency rooms and civilian hospitals number 20 and 24 began receiving calls from patients who complained about headaches, coughing and mild fever, and symptoms of ordinary flu. However, two days later, citizens with severe symptoms like high fevers, breathing problems and vomiting appeared at the hospitals. Doctors initially believed patients were suffering from pneumonia, but as the number of reports increased each day, they began suspecting an epidemic of an unknown infectious disease. No one even considered anthrax, because no one was aware of a biological weapons production facility in the city. Moreover, the last case of the disease was recorded years ago. Most medical staff in these two hospitals had never seen inhalation anthrax symptoms and were utterly confused when patients began to die of suffocation, their throats filled with blood and skin covered with dark lesions. They treated patients the only way they knew to, with antibiotics and steroids, but with no results. The number of fatalities was increasing with each day. Finally, after a couple of days, while examining the body of a dead patient, a female pathologist noticed the hemorrhaging in small vessels within the brain membrane that led her to believe patients were infected with anthrax. Now, the question of where anthrax came from came up. The medical authorities quickly reacted after the official bacteriological confirmation of anthrax was issued on April 11th. The following day, all patients with severe symptoms were transferred to the Infectious Disease Department at Hospital No. 40. In addition, the Chukalovsky District of the city where almost all patients either lived or worked was put into quarantine, with tens of thousands of district residents aged 18 to 55 years old vaccinated. Government authorities also reacted swiftly. Their goal was to cover up the source of the disease. There was no way to hide that the anthrax epidemic was ongoing, but they could cover up its tracks. First, a local newspaper issued a warning about a Siberian ulcer, a Russian term for anthrax, a disease caused by the consumption of infected meat. Next, leaflets were distributed to warn residents not to eat contaminated meat or come into contact with stray animals, which were hunted down and eliminated. Citizens had to be convinced the outbreak of anthrax had natural causes. The entire disputed district was subjected to thorough decontamination. Soldiers wearing protective suits sprayed and scrubbed the streets, as well as the buildings, walls, and roofs. Bulldozers were stripping layers of contaminated soil, while dirt roads were paved with asphalt. It took several months for the entire decontamination process to be finished. In the meantime, a local KGB chief officer conducted an inquiry of his own. Surprisingly, he was unaware of the secret facility within Compound 19. Since he suspected something wicked was going on there, he tapped the phone lines. It didn't take long for him to discover the truth about the missing filter and the real source of the anthrax outbreak. However, as part of the extensive cover-up campaign, he was ordered to stay silent about everything he learned. The anthrax death toll continued to rise for six weeks after the accident. Finally, years after, the Soviet government issued an official statement that 96 people were infected with anthrax, of which 64 died. The report was probably yet another chapter of the Soviet cover-up story, as estimates are that more than 600 people died as a result of the accident. It is believed that around half of these were military reservists who attended training at the nearby military base, Compound 32. These men were never subjected to treatment or autopsies by civilian doctors. The rest of the victims were residents of the Chukalovsky district and workers in local factories, especially the ceramic pipe plant, which suffered direct exposure. In reality, the large casualty rate resulted from a massive amount of deadly spores released, approximately 10 kilograms, and the fact that no one was aware of the source of the infection. A somewhat lucky circumstance was that human anthrax is not considered contagious and cannot be transmitted person to person. Otherwise, the number of infected and deceased in given conditions would be much higher. The Soviet government had all the prerequisites to cover up the accident and all the causes that led to it. The Soviet Union was a totalitarian country where the entire society was kept under firm government control. 
The authorities had all the levers in their hands, including the media, so providing a false image of reality was not a big problem. Citizens of Sverdlovsk might have suspected different origins of infection, but no one spoke about it openly. Doctors were pledged to secrecy, and all their medical documentation showing proof of inhalatory anthrax was confiscated. The rest of the world knew absolutely nothing about the accident. The Western countries already knew little about what was going on in the Soviet Union, let alone the things the government tried to keep secret. However, six months later, in October 1979, an article appeared in a Russian-language paper issued in Frankfurt, West Germany, about the bacteriological accident in the Soviet Union. The article was filled with inaccurate data and exaggerated numbers, but still raised suspicion about the event. Other British and German papers then ran the story. The British intelligence agency MI6 got somewhat more precise information. The British agents in East Germany received information from Germans traveling from Sverdlovsk about the accident in a biological weapon production facility that caused death among the local population. Ultimately, thanks to the CIA's efforts, the Western powers gained more thorough insight into the Sverdlovsk accident. At the CIA headquarters in Langley, Virginia, they compared satellite images of Compound 19 and the surrounding area before, during, and after the days when they believed the accident took place. Images showed checkpoints indicating quarantine and decontamination vehicles around the district, especially around Compound 19 they suspected was hiding a biological weapons production facility. Soon, the information from credible sources within the Soviet Union confirmed their suspicions. On March 17, 1980, the U.S. government presented a secret démarche to the Soviet Union expressing concern regarding the possible accident in Sverdlovsk. If it took place, the Soviets were violating the Biological and Toxin Weapons Convention. However, the Soviets responded to the American accusation by claiming that the victims were infected with a gastrointestinal type of anthrax through contaminated meat. Several days after, they informed the public worldwide of the anthrax outbreak, sticking to their story of the natural causes of the infection. Some leading Soviet physicians even published an article in the prestigious Moscow Medical Journal claiming they traced the source of anthrax to two families who were infected by the meat they bought at the makeshift market. The U.S. government denied all Soviet claims as implausible. However, under the pressure of other, more important international issues, this simply fell off the agenda. In 1988, the Soviet cover-up story resurfaced when two Soviet physicians who dealt with the anthrax outbreak were called to the United States to present their case. In a series of lectures, they presented the anthrax case caused by consuming meat from contaminated animals. Their American hosts, led by Harvard professor and arms control activist Matthew Messelson, approved the report as plausible thus putting an end to the discussion about the origins of the anthrax epidemic in Sverdlovsk. The story seemed to have passed, but only until the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991. The following year, the president of the Russian Federation, Boris Yeltsin, who was also the head of the Communist Party in Sverdlovsk in the late 1970s, made a statement about the accident in the Komsomolskaya Pravda newspaper. He acknowledged what everyone suspected for years that an anthrax epidemic was accidentally caused by military researchers, not by natural causes. In an effort to disclose the whole truth about the accident, the Russian government allowed a group of American scientists to visit Yekaterinburg, former Sverdlovsk, in 1992 and 1993. A team led by the very same Professor Messelson who approved the earlier Soviet report conducted thorough research of all medical documents including those seized by the KGB. They concluded that the, quote, outbreak resulted from the windborne spread of an aerosol of anthrax pathogen, that the source was at the military microbiology facility, and that the escape of the pathogen occurred during the day on Monday, 2 April. In addition to these claims, the Russian pathologists who performed autopsies during the epidemic provided evidence that the fatal cases were caused by the inhalatory type of anthrax. Undoubtedly, victims inhaled the anthrax spores. There was no contaminated meat. The truth was slow, but eventually came to the light of the day. 
It revealed the 1979 Sverdlovsk epidemic as the largest documented outbreak of human inhalation anthrax. The accident that claimed hundreds of lives was a unique and appalling display of how terrifying and insidious biological weapons could be. Watch this episode next if you found this video interesting. Please add a like and leave a comment if you want to support the channel.